the spacing determines the size of the bulb that you're going to get. So how you hold the seed ring matters a lot. Once you break the stem of the seed ring, you've started losing it. After knowing how to hold your seed ring, you also need to know the spacing that you need to, to use when transplanting your seed ring. Money making time, money making day. And in onions, it's known the very day you transplant your onion. Just like the old saying usually goes, the very day the chicken is hatched, the cock is known among the hatched chickens. So the same thing happens when it comes to onion farming. The things that you do during transplanting day are the things that will determine your future when it comes to onion farming business because the business has officially started. Remember, we have been learning about nursery management. This is the, the baby steps towards making money. And now we are on the money making process, which is planting day. Many things need to be done. I know uh, some of the farmers or majority of the farmers usually hire the spray plant, the fertilizer plant, and that is the most efficient. Well, Fred, which fertilizer do you use at planting? What do we spray? Uh, how do we irrigate? Those are the things they ask. But how you plant your onion is what matters before you go to the next step of applying the fertilizer and also applying the chemicals and doing the irrigation. First thing, first thing, first. Before transplanting, before you decide to transplant, you need to irrigate or to do the irrigation in your main field. This is to make your soil moist and also uh, to make sure that you reduce the heat intensity. Like you can see, it's very hot in the place that I am in to, to reduce the heat intensity inside the soil. Remember, you're bringing in a very young seed ring and this seed ring needs to be taken care of. This seed ring needs to be managed. This seed ring needs to be handled like a young baby so if you bring it in a hot in a very hot soil if you bring it in a very dry soil you are going to kill the seed ring even before 24 hours head so you need to do the first irrigation which is very key after doing the first irrigation and you're satisfied with how your soil looks like then that when the music start that when the real game start planting start and key things to observe during planting day key things to observe is uh, the weather of the day is not a big factor uh, because sometimes you're doing it when it's very hot sometimes you can do it when it's raining so the weather is not a factor so the key thing to observe is your seed ring how healthy is your seed ring the next thing the key thing you need to observe is how that seed ring is handled because you can you can have some uh, planters who people planting for you who are not planting at the right way the next thing to observe is the spacing of your seed tree then with that you are going to go and we start or we begin our lesson by showing you how the healthy seed ring and how to handle uh, the, the seedling and how planting is supposed to be done and planting can be done in a different way depending by the irrigation that you choose. Those who've choose fallow irrigation, they have a different way of doing it. Those who've choose uh, drip irrigation, they have a different way of doing it. I've choose sprinkler irrigation. I'm going to show you how I'm doing my way. But what is common is the spacing of how you plant, how you plant them, and how you have your seedlings. So regardless of the irrigation that you're using, even if you're using the rain, even if you're using the rain horse, in anything that you're using, even if you're using the center pivot, the spacing is the key factor. Because like I told you, this is a game of numbers. And to win in a game of numbers, you need to have as many numbers as possible. So this is how I do planting my onions and this is the best way to do it. So the next step is to make sure you have your siblings with you. The healthiest seedlings is what you choose. When choosing the seedlings, remember you've raised the seedlings in your nursery like I did. Those, if this is your first time that you're watching me, 
I have prepared more than 15 episodes of how to manage the nursery and how to lease such a good uh, seedling. So go there, learn so that we can be at par and you can be able to know how to lease the seedling. So you select the healthiest seedlings. Healthy seedling is seedling that is free from disease, seedling that has no pest and a seedlings that a seedling that can be held. We usually call it a pencil size seedling and this is a seedling that we are going to transplant today. This is what I'm going to show you how to do the transplanting. So you hold your seedlings and um, as you can see I've removed the top part of the of the seedlings. I've cut the top part of the seedling. Um, there are so many reasons to why you usually cut the top part of the seedling. I'll, after this, the next episode I'm going to share with you uh, the biggest reason. But uh, just in short form, I'm going to tell you this is in order to make the seedling be able to produce the root as fast as possible. Because once you cut it on the top, you've already stressed the seedling. So the next thing it is start looking for is survival. So while it's looking for survival, it is going to develop the root at a very high speed and then you will have a continuous or a good health. So this is a seed dream and remember you've already uh, made your bed the way it is. Uh, sometimes you are forced to step on the bed depending by the size of the bed. You can see how my bed is two meters by two meters. So the next thing is you plant a seed dream. So, how you hold this seedling matters a lot. Because once you break the stem of the seedling, you've started losing it. So you hold it, you hold it the way I'm holding it, and you place it in the soil, no struggling, that way. So you hold the seedling and place it in the soil, that way. You can use your finger, you can use a stick, you can use any planting material, but this is how we transplant our seedling. We transplant is it as fast as that. So this is the transplanting process of the seedling. See how you are holding your seedling? So that the transplanting, that the first step of handling the seedling. Handling the seedling. So this is how we transplant our onion seedling. You see? We transplant it that way. Then the next step, or what you need to know as a farmer, and I know this is your biggest question, is the spacing that I use to transplant my seedling. That is your biggest concern, and uh, that is the biggest class. Because after knowing how to hold your seedling, you also need to know the spacing that you need to, to use when transplanting your seedling. In my case, I'm going for the, because the, the, the spacing has determined, all the spacing determines the size of the bulb that you're going to get. In my case, I'm targeting a medium size bulb, and that's why I've chosen the spacing that I'm working with. If you go for the big size, you are going to have a wide spacing. If you want to go for a small size, you are going to have a squeezed spacing. But for my case, I'm do I'm interested in a medium size bulb that the market is in need of, and my spacing is between you can do these two spacing for the medium between from one plant to the other i'm doing eight centimeters and from one lot to the other i'm doing 10 centimeters this is this finger that i'm holding here gives me from ear to ear gives me eight centimeters so i'm able to know using my finger the centimeters that i'm doing from one plant to the other that way i'm using 10 centimeters so it's as simple as that. Transplanting and making sure that your onions start still. 
there is no, none of them that is falling. So it starts still and things flows as fast as that. The, the, the land is very soft and we've already, we, because we had, we had already watered it and planting is quick. So this is how we do it. We place the seed ring as we do that. Remember the spacing is 8 centimeters by 10 centimeters. You can do 8 by 8. If it's less, do 7 by 7. But if you want a small bulb, you do a spacing of around 5 centimeters by 7 centimeters. You're going to have a smaller bulb. If you want a wider bulb, you do a spacing of 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. You are going to get a very big bulb. Now, that's why I usually tell farmers, start with the market. Because the market will tell you or will guide you on the size of the bulb that you use. And from the size of the bulb, you are, it's going to determine the spacing of your onions, how you are going to transplant. So it's simple and easy as that. Very simple, very easy, and very enjoyable. Don't forget to enjoy. Very simple, very easy, and very enjoyable. So that's how we do our transplanting. And it's as simple as that. As a farmer, there is nothing more that is needed to be done. There is nothing less that you need to do. Uh, it's just following those few steps and do your transplanting and make it a success. As successful as mine. You can see uh, the lower side that I've already transplanted. It's very successful and looking forward for a very successful and a very a good training. For more information, uh, if you want to reach out to me uh, via a call, I'm going to drop my number on the, on the description box uh, of this video. And also, for those who are willing to visit me, because this is the beginning of the big class, um, you are much welcomed to visit my farm. Learn and be a better onion farmer. This is just but the beginning of our journey. And we look forward for very successful learning and very successful training. If it's your first time, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, join to be a member of this YouTube channel. By you joining to be a member, you support my work and we continue learning together. Bye.